to do. Hello and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm I'm Duncan Chapel, and I'm really delighted to be able to introduce the uh, the Westcon webinar with our colleague uh, Daniel Ural. As you'll see, that today we're talking about trends in cybersecurity. Uh, as we mentioned in the the uh, invitation for the webinar, we're particularly talking about the way that the attack surface is transforming for organizations. Really delighted to be welcomed. Sorry, I'm really delighted to welcome Daniel Urell here today. Daniel leads the cybersecurity work here at uh, here at Westcon, and as this time last year, I know is going to give a really fantastic overview of uh, of what is happening in the cybersecurity market. This really leverages Westcom's unique position as one of the largest distributors of one of the most comprehensive um, portfolios of cybersecurity solutions. And I think that range of tools really reflects the range of tools that, that opponents uh, facing our clients are uh, dealing with in the increasing complexity of attacks is reflected by the increasing need for a portfolio of solutions to, to secure the modern enterprise. Daniel, I will hand over to you. Thank you so much for your support today and for your, um, for your presentations. Thank you, Duncan, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very happy to, uh, to take the time uh, today um, to talk to you about um, the, uh, the new attack surface. Um, as you know, uh, I saw some uh, some familiar names. So it seems that last time it was uh, the topic that we covered. I think it was uh, several quarters ago. It was interesting. So uh, and you're back. So I'm very happy about that. So um, um, thanks to our um, uh, customers, the uh, the VARs, the SIs, the GSIs, the MSSPs, and of course our vendor partners. Um, Westcon is able to uh, give you a unique perspective of this uh, cybersecurity trend. And uh, today we will address the uh, protection of the attack surface, um, expanding by, expanded by the change of the uh, environment with the associated risks. And, uh, and uh, of course, this uh, change of environment, and we will talk more about that, about this uh, fourth uh, industrial um, uh, revolution. But uh, first, uh, I would like to, uh, to introduce myself. So my, new, my name is Daniel Urel. I'm the uh, Vice President for Westcott EMEA in charge of uh, cybersecurity and uh, next generation solution. Uh, what it does mean is I'm uh, responsible to uh, suggest a strategy to the board um, and uh, responsible for the go-to-market. I've uh, been in uh, distribution and technology for 30 years or, or more, um, 21 years in Western security through different acquisitions. Um, and um, uh, during those years, uh, I had several roles and uh, the past uh, 10, I was in charge of the uh, business development um, for uh, Wascon and also uh, Comstore. So uh, first of all, I would like to, um, to make sure that you you know what what we're doing for a living. Uh, what we want first is we want our partner to be uh, successful, uh, and this is what we are doing uh, day in and day out. So we start, of course, with uh, um, a very good vendor relationship and understand their strategy and and align uh, their strategy and the tactics with uh, with ours. When we 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 understand everything. Um, or almost everything, uh, we go and talk to the partner and, and convince the partner, motivate the partner to onboard uh, with, the, uh, with the vendor or, or with the, uh, the solution or the different technologies. And we have just launched a very uh, unique tool for the, the partners um, to test the integration of the different technologies from our vendors, which is the 3D lab. I won't cover that long because it's not the topic, but I would uh, encourage you to uh, to go on the on our website and have a look to this uh, 3D lab. And we provide also the partners uh, with some market insight for them to uh, be able to identify the, the opportunities. We uh, support them on the pre-sale side, but also on the post-sale side and on the education 
and to make sure that they understand um, the uh, the uh, the technology and and the solutions. And for that, we launched uh, uh, several weeks ago uh, a tech community where the technical people will talk and will change the best practices and the, what they found on the solutions and how they could. Um, uh, protect better the infrastructure of the uh, of the end user, and when everything has been chosen, we help our partners to uh, to deploy, because um, uh, in distribution, of course, there is some hardware, but we are talking more into uh, licenses and keys and and uh, subscription as a service, uh, which is uh, more into uh, a digital world. But since uh, with the global deployment, we need to take care of the, this new tax called the WHT, the withholding tax. So we need to, uh, to uh, give uh, to our partners our uh, skills and competencies to uh, make their life uh, a little bit easier and for them once again to be, uh, to be successful. So in the, in the very uh, nutshell, this is uh, on the cybersecurity space. Uh, the main contributor of uh, of the solution and uh, what we are uh, specifying to uh, to the market and mainly into uh, the four very interesting pillars today which are which is the zero trust and also the iot ot security the cloud security and devops and the emerging threat defense um, uh, I think that you you all know about that, but if we go to the emerging threat defense, we'll talk more about something that rings a bell for you, which is malware or or the ransomware, or in the old fashioned way, it was uh, virus and, uh, and worms. So what we want to do is to make sure that we evolve with the with market needs and we could provide not only a technology, but we will provide uh, solutions. In um, in some numbers, uh, Westcon into uh, into numbers. You could uh, read that, but we are a solid company, four billion dollar turnover, thirty four hundred people. We are we are dealing with twelve thousand partners, and uh, it's still uh, we have eighteen logistics and uh, and staging facilities to help our our customers. Now let's go uh, let's go to the. Um, to the main topic of uh, of this uh, of this webinar, and uh, and I would like to talk about the attack surface protection. This uh, the attack surface protection. In the past, we were the vendors uh, and the resellers. What they try to do is to reduce the attack surface to make it um, easier to uh, to protect. But with the change of the uh, the different environment. And uh, I want, would like to talk about, unfortunately, the COVID, uh, where you have a lot of uh, workers uh, remote, working remotely, and uh, with, the with the different devices, sometimes their own device, but sometimes devices that PCs or laptop provided by, uh, uh, by the, uh, uh, their company, uh, but also um, some, uh, as I said, their own device. So, from an attack surface very limited to the prem to the to the enterprise. Um, again, unfortunately, with COVID, okay, we needed to uh, to work outside of the per perimeter. So we need to uh, we needed to protect also and the also the remote workers. And then the attack surface uh, did did expand. But it's not just about uh, the COVID. It's also now what we. I could call the, the past COVID, the, the attack surface did, uh, did increase uh, again, uh, because you have now these uh, hybrid uh, workers, they are working uh, uh, remotely, but also in, uh, on, on prem. So it's, it's again, uh, you, we needed to protect the prem and we need to protect also uh, the remote workers. So the attack surface, as a definition, is everything that is on the edge of the system or uh, at the edge of the infrastructure where an authorized user, okay, or also known as a hacker or as an attacker could enter data into the infrastructure, into the database, 
the data could be malware, could be a ransomware, or could extract some data like your medical file, like your credit card numbers, like your bank account details, like everything. And, and you see that this, um, the more the attack surface is, uh, is growing, bigger it is, uh, it's, uh, it's a challenge to, uh, to secure and to, and to protect. And we will, and we will uh, it, it would be the, the main topic today on how could we protect that and why this uh, attack surface um, uh, has developed. And this is not just about the, um, uh, what we talked about the, uh, the fourth industrial uh, revolution. It's um, the fourth industrial revolution um, started in Germany in 2011, uh, but before going into the fourth industrial revolution, also known as uh, uh, Industry 4.0, uh, also known as uh, the, uh, for uh, IR, um, if you are looking in, into into the web, but um, to prepare this uh, this uh, this session, I said, okay, we, we will talk about the fourth industrial revolution. But what was again the third one, and maybe the second one? And what was the first um, industrial revolution? So, giving some perspective. Uh, the first revolution, industrial revolution, I think it was at the end of the 18th century. So that was back 300 years ago. Uh, and it starts with the everything powered by the steam and the water. And as I said, it started in, um, in, the, um, in, uh, in Germany. So um, it started in the UK, sorry. The second industrial revolution, it was more about mass production and the uh, assembly line uh, powered by the uh, electricity. And that was the, the end of the 19th. Um, and that was in the US and, and Germany. And the third one was everything around computer and automation. And it comes from uh, the US and Japan at the end of the 20th. So now we are in the fourth industrial uh, revolution. So what does it mean? As I said, it started in 2011 in Germany, and it was an initiative uh, by the uh, German government who asked the, uh, the factories or the manufacturers to connect between their factory plant to um, the factory floor to the businesses. Why? Because they wanted to be more productive, they were, they were, they want to be they wanted to be more efficient they wanted to be more profitable and they would like to have an interconnection real time between what the manufacturer and the business it's all start with uh, the manufacturing <clears throat> sorry the manufacturing uh, story in in germany and then from 2011 it went all over and it was not just about Germany, it was in Europe, it was in the US. Everything that we needed to connect needed to be connected. And this is why the attack surface exploded uh, for this, uh, during this uh, four industrial revolution that we are in, uh, in today. So what does it mean? It means that if you want to connect, uh, if you want the service, if you want to, uh, to have some information, if you want to have um, uh, a solution to a question or an answer to a question that you ask, and for example, you want to uh, watch a movie, you want to, uh, to know where you are, you want to know, uh, uh, you, you, you want to uh, ask for a taxi and so on, you, you will ask for a service. And those services are capable, you, you will have the access of these services if you have the data. And the data is stored in different, in different um, uh, location. And you have, when you, when you ask the request to have this service, let's say that you want to, um, to, uh, to watch a movie, the movie is the data. And you, you put the request and you go through a full chain of software who will say, 
Yeah, who are you? Where are you? Uh, what kind of movie do you ask? Are you able to watch this movie? Have you paid your subscription? And so on and so on. And all this information, all this data are stored somewhere. And you need a lot of uh, services, a lot of software and microservices, okay, to make sure that your request and the data will be connected. In this, in this link, you have a lot of software, but we call also the application. You have the virtual uh, warehouse where we store the data and you have everything connected, what we call the, the API. And the, the, the service that you, are, yeah, that you ask, the movie, for example, will go through what we call an application. But what is an application? An, an application is a software to do a unique task. And to watch a movie, you have a thousand of applications, a thousand services, a thousand of microservices. And to define the microservices, it would be when you, are, you log on Netflix or Uber, um, they will know who, who you are, what, what gender you are, what credit card you are using, um, what is your subscription. And all these services into the services, so the microservices are stored into a virtual warehouse called the containers. So if I go back to me asking for uh, a service, I want to watch a movie or I want a car to pick me to pick me point A and, and take me to point B. This request will trigger a lot of services, a lot of software called also application for me to get the, uh, the car, for me to get the, uh, the movie. And this is enormous. The number of application which is using by, by you or the, uh, here, uh, by you or the, the companies, it's hundreds of applications, thousands of applications for uh, on, on, on the business side. So you could imagine the attack surface, because this is what we're talking about, is to protect your data and the expansion of the attack surface. This attack surface has exploded lately because of the use of the application, because we as uh, consumers, we would like to have access to the services wherever we are, where, whatever devices that we are using, whatever request that we have, we would like to have that on uh, real time, and we would like to have that in, on our fingertips. So, because of the proliferation of the application, because of the uh, uh, proliferation of the data, because you need to connect the application, uh, each, um, you need to connect the application um, uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the data through um, what we call the APIs and the APIs the API is the glue between two applications. So this attack surface is no more what we, we used to have when it was the third industrial uh, revolution. Now it's the connection are everywhere. Everything is connected. People are connected. Machines are connected. If, if you go back to uh, the, uh, the example that I, was, um, uh, I gave a, a few minutes ago, uh, into the uh, the factory floor. Uh, if you want to adjust the um, your um, the, the manufacturing, and you want to know the uh, the temperature of the steel, or you want to know the uh, how much carbon and sulfur it's in the uh, in the uh, in the steel. So you need to adjust the temperature of the furnace. You need to add more of this, more of this, but real time to make sure that you don't. You, you improve your productivity, but you also you improve your working conditions and you are also reducing the carbon, uh, carbon footprint. 
Everything needs to be connected. Everything needs to be real time. Everything needs to be um, uh, yeah, connected with the, with the data. So the most important information that we need to secure beyond the application, beyond the API, beyond the microservices, beyond the containers and so on is the data. We need to protect the data. And how are we going to do that? And this is the new world of application. As I told you, there are many applications, even uh, uh, more APIs. So the, the connectors between two applications that will help you to get the services that you would like, okay? Which again, expand the attack surface. How are we going to, uh, how are we going to protect that? So um, I like this, um, uh, this old fashioned uh, slide that will illustrate uh, where we are when it comes to, uh, to, uh, the, applica to the application protection. So we, could, we have everything to protect the, the full link. First of all, what we need to do is to protect the human. We need to protect you, okay? The device needs to know, or the system needs to know that it's real, really you who ask the request. So as you know, you have on your cell phone, you've got your the fingertip or the face recognition. This is the first identity, and now it's a mutual factor authentication. So you, you, you have already a protection um, upfront. Then you go to the several APIs or several applications. We have, of course, on the web, we, you, we have this, uh, the, the WAF. And if we, you want to, um, uh, to protect the API, we have the API encryption, or you have the, uh, the sorry, I didn't explain the WAF. The WAF is the uh, web application firewall. So the web application firewall, so the firewall would be, uh, would be protected when it's the request coming from the web. And, and you have the API between two applications. So we need to protect the API. And then we have also um, the data stored in a virtual warehouse, and we need to protect that against the, uh, the leak, okay? That we call the, uh, the, the, the DLP, data leak protection. So we have a bunch of solutions that could uh, protect this new use or this new conception of services. So um, we could not reduce the, the attack surface because it's, uh, has, it, it has increased a lot, but we could put the right protection, the right security at each level of the full channel, the full link, when you want a service or you want an information until the information get back to you. So this slide is a little bit um, more technical, but uh, you will have a complete visibility of what happened now into the infrastructure to come from, as I said, from your request, which is on the, on the web, okay? On the internet, uh, web is an application of the, uh, the, uh, of the internet. And then you go into several layers and, and we protect uh, together with we, uh, our vendor partners, we protect each layers by a specific technology, and then all this technology comes to a full solution to make sure that we could uh, we could protect the best we can your your data. So this this slide is a little bit simple and uh, will illustrate uh, the uh, the application threats. So you'll see that on the upper slide uh, side of the slide and the protection that we specify uh, when we code. Uh, you certainly heard about the uh, uh, secured, by, uh, secured by design. So now the DevOps, uh, so the guy in charge of the development of the code, they, they include the security in the code so we could have the microservices completely protected. Could you imagine that a couple, not a couple of years ago, that was more 10 years ago, if you had some knowledge about uh, how to read a code in, um, in, 
in the bar of the web, okay, you could change the price of the product that you could purchase. It was not protected. The guy who made the code to make sure that when you click on buy, it goes to another page and it will take your credit card and so on. When you check out, if you pay attention to the uh, URL, you could change, you could not now, no more, because it's protected, but 10 years ago, okay, you have the opportunity to change the price. Now, because the security is in the code, okay, there is no way that you could change um, the, uh, the, uh, the price of the, uh, the product that you want, you want to buy. And this is just an example to illustrate the fact that the code is secure, they think about that, okay? So it's more, it's no more the DevOps, but it's uh, the DevSecOps. And then we have also solution to deploy the different services, the different application, the different APIs securely. And of course, now that it's on production, we need also to have the different solution to, to, to protect the, uh, the run in the run phase, uh, how uh, the consumer and how the, uh, the, uh, the business will ask for different applications and will ask for different uh, 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 services. If you go to Salesforce or if you go to LinkedIn or if you go to um, other application, um, it's, it's a service that you request and the Salesforce and the Netflix and so on, these are the application. I would like that to be clear. I know I repeat myself a little bit, but everybody is talking about application and it's quite difficult to say, okay, but is Netflix an application? Yes, it is. Is Waze an application? Yes, it is. Is uh, Uber an application? Yes, it is. And so on and so on and so on. So you are using application and behind the scene, there is a kind of big factory that will help you to get the information and help you to get the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the services. And there is a solution to protect every single steps of this request coming from you to the data. Now, API, application, data, it's a buzzword. Okay, everybody is talking about that. Gardner, a couple of years, a couple of months ago, uh, one of your colleagues uh, launched a new uh, terminology called CNAP, Cloud Native Application Protection Platform. So it's quite new. Some of, some of our vendors uh, came with a new term, terminology, which is WAP, Web Application and, and API Protection. So this is, Today, the, the, the trendy words, we need to protect the application. So everybody jumped into this opportunity and everybody said, yeah, we, we do that also. We will protect the API, we protect the application, we protect the containers, we protect the microservices, therefore we protect the data. So all the focus, okay, is on protecting the application, the API, the containers and the services. However, they forget that there is an infrastructure. So it's good that we have solutions and people are um, uh, thinking about protecting the application, the API and the, and the data, but we have an infrastructure. First of all, the foundation of everything is the IT infrastructure. And if you, and if you read uh, the slide, you will see that we, we talk a lot about the malware because the malware and somewhere and so on, they are, uh, they are making the headlines of the newspaper. Now, we don't read newspaper anymore because it, everything is digital, but you, uh, they're making the headlines of the, uh, of, of the news on, on the web. Malware, ransomware. But there is, uh, as you could see, there is a, a, a decline into this malware and somewhere this year. But there is an increase of the DDoS attack. And the DDoS, DDoS attack uh, is known for years, more than 10 years. 
And this one is increasing by 9% when the other one is increasing by 8%. So there is about 20%, 20 point difference between one and the other. And we are focusing on the one that is decreasing. When we need to think as a, as a risk manager, okay, where is the big bridge? And the big bridge today is on the DDoS, you know, getting back to this number. Of course, we need to protect the application APIs and so on. But as the more attacks came from the DDoS, so DDoS means um, uh, distributed denial of services. To give you an example, it's like uh, a highway, which will be uh, uh, the, uh, the, tr the traffic of the, the data. So the highway is built for a thousand cars a day, let's say, okay? And the DDoS attack could be um, a million of cars a day. So what could we expect us in the car driving from A to B? When there is a thousand, okay, we could go to B. When there is a million, we're stuck. So we could not get our services so the DDoS attack, it's exactly the same. The attackers are bombarded the, the servers with traffic. And so the servers could not co-op with the traffic so that it's down. And therefore the users or the customers or the, uh, the business can have access to the, uh, to the data, could have access to the services could have access to the information and therefore either they switch to another provider, which cause uh, a big impact on the reputation, a big impact on the business, and of course, loss of revenue, loss, loss of revenue, loss of business, and everything like that. So make a long story short, yes, the application is very important. The fourth industrial revolution brings connectivity everywhere for everybody. And this is great. This is good for, for the cybersecurity business. It will um, push us to protect the API, the data, the application, the microservices, as I mentioned before. This is good, and we need to do that. But what we need to do also is not forget okay, about what, what does exist today, okay, which is the to protect the foundation of the IT infrastructure. This is critical, is the cornerstone of our uh, network. And we could listen to the buzzwords and the new trends and the, uh, the change of environment which will ask us to protect more things. I'm, I'm not talking about the 5G or the Wi-Fi sticks, but this is also a change of uh, environment. We need also to take care of the protection of the existing IT infrastructure. So how could we do that? Uh, we, we need to monitor uh, the, uh, uh, the network. Uh, we need to prevent. We need to uh, be advised by uh, experts. We need to think about uh, solutions instead of thinking only on the, uh, on the technology. And definitely, we need to protect the, uh, the more important uh, asset of uh, even the consumer, but also on the business side, which is uh, the data. And this, with uh, our channel, we could do that. Uh, with our vendor partners, uh, which bring the best of breed technology or the end-to-end -end solutions, we have everything that the businesses could need to protect both the foundation and the uh, uh, the new uh, the new trend uh, made out of the environment, the change of the environment, and this is the end of my presentation. So, if you have any questions, I'll be more than welcome to uh, to answer. I would like to thank you for investing time this afternoon, listen to uh, to uh, this new trend and the attack surface, and uh, I will. Uh, I will listen to uh, to the question and try to answer uh, to answer them. Thanks, uh, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh,
we'll we'll hold on for a couple of minutes in case there are in case for questions from uh, from uh, from the uh, from the audience. Uh, I, I want to start off with a with a question of my own. You you spoken about this change in the uh, in the in the attack surface and. You know, I, I think you've you've spoken quite compellingly, I think, especially about about DDoS. That's that's something which is, you know, something that is cl clearly, uh, you know, has a, a, an enduring problem across the market. Are you seeing differences in the conversations between the the vendors that you are speaking with on the one hand and the resellers that you are speaking? With? You know, are there are there different kind of timelines, different? challenges for these two communities or do they seem quite well aligned in their understanding of what is what is changing in the market well there is um, there is a, a small delay between the vendors and um, the resellers uh, because uh, the resellers are more in, in contact with the end user and the end user will you know have some requests uh, on the different solutions that, or the different challenges, not, not, not the solutions, okay? They have challenges and they have issues and this is why they go to the resellers and ask for a solution. And then um, the, the delay between the vendor and, and, the, uh, and the resellers, um, uh, re the vendors, they have the solution and they need, and they need to, uh, they need to uh, advise the solution, but it's very difficult for uh, resellers, even uh, cybersecurity resellers, to embrace everything. Uh, there is, uh, it depends on the sources, but you have nine or between nine and 11 layers of security. And within these different layers, you have multiple technologies and multiple vendors. How do you want the resellers to be an expert in everything? Okay, it's it's very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's a very it's very difficult position. So there is always a request coming from an end user that the reseller is not ready to uh, to uh, to answer. It's there is also vendors on their side, which uh, they are very specialized in one solution. Okay, could be XDR, could be uh, SSE, could be uh, ZTA, could be IoT, OT security. And there are some other vendors which could be called as an end-to-end -end solutions. Um, and, and, and this creates also the delay between the solution which could be advised by the reseller to the end user Okay, because you have this um, loss, loss in transit expertise between the vendor and the reseller. That answer your question, uh, Duncan? Yeah, I, I wonder if I can drill down a little bit more onto, onto the level of specific products. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. the, the portfolio is, is extremely extensive uh, for, uh, for, for West Carlo. And and on the one hand, I mean, there are some there are some solutions which really describe themselves as being attack surface management solutions. But then, of course, there are other tools that people would use to manage their their, their attack solution that might not their attack surface that might not describe themselves explicitly as being solutions only for managing the attack surface. What what's the portfolio of products that 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 Westcon is for for this? Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> um, I mean, all the uh, uh, we don't carry a lot of uh, vendor partners. Uh, it's uh, in the cybersecurity um, uh, portfolio. It's about less than twenty, and we select these uh, these vendor partners to to have uh, an end to end or. A, um, a very uh, a pure player into the technology, okay? Because the more mature get the technology, uh, the the uh, the reseller or the end user uh, will have some um, uh, between quotes uh, generic uh, solution. But when the, there is a new change of, on the environment, let's take the five G, okay? Five G will help. Uh, the business to have their own private uh, network 
reliable and, and fast, okay? And therefore, the IoT, OT industry will use the 5G, okay, and to, to uh, transact the data. So when these, um, uh, when these challenges, like they want to protect the IoT, OT, the end user will go for, will go for uh, a pure player because they trust that the pure player will have a better solution than an end-to-end um, and, uh, and end solution vendor. So they will, they will take um, uh, for the IoT OT, the one that we have in our portfolio is CloudOT, uh, which required Medicaid for the, uh, uh, for the uh, medical uh, uh, market. Uh, they will go more into, into uh, this direction even if Palo Alto, which is more an end-to-end -end solution or checkpoint, which is more an end-to-end -end solution vendor, they have solution also to protect the IoT OT, okay? But this is, this is not a mature market. So the end user will try to ask the question first to a pure player. And after that, if they have an install base on checkpoint or if they have an install base on Palo Alto, then they could redirect to rationalize, rationalize a little bit the number of vendors that they have um, to carry in their infrastructure. So coming back to your question about the, the attack surface protection, there is too many applications, as I just mentioned, uh, Duncan, too many applications sitting in too many places for too many users or too many to have just one solution who will cover all the API, all the application, all the deployment, all the, the, the DDoS, because we don't have to forget about the DDoS. Yes, some like A5, they have this um, uh, web application uh, API protection, okay? And so they could help you with the deployment and they could help you with the protection of the API and, 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 uh, and uh, application. Uh, but when it comes to uh, uh, protect the infrastructure with the pure firewall, you could not ask that to a five. You need to ask that to a firewall player, which could be uh, Palo Alto or Checkpoint. And if you go down, okay, if you need to protect the data and the uh, the machine, the laptop, these devices with the what we call now the XDR, um, and the Exchange Detection and Response. Uh, you could not ask that to uh, NetScout because NetScout and Arbor, they are specializing to monitoring the traffic and the DDoS. Uh, so you have an end-to-end -end for the attack surface. There is too many things to protect, okay? So, and, and therefore, you need to have a solution for each application. I mean, each use, not each application, each use. Daniel, thank you so much. The, these are all the questions that we have today. As always, this webinar is recorded and, and I'm sure there'll be analysts watching this recording. So I should just say if there are people with, with questions that they asynchronously want to send to us by email, of course, we will work very hard to share those with Daniel and to get responses back to, uh, to anyone who wants to drill a little bit more deeply on, 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 on on, on the cybersecurity portfolio and that the challenges, the changing challenges that Westcon is helping companies to address. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us again. This is a, a really fantastic survey of what has been changing and coming to the fore in the conversations that you have. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for asking me. Excellent, thank you. Thanks so much, bye-bye. Thank you, bye.